Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Raksha and in this video I'll be talking about the next few tips which are essential uh, to Power BI that one developer must follow. So let's get started. So firstly, organize the tables in relationship view in a logical manner. Look for dimension tables surrounding the cluster of fact tables in the middle, reducing crossover of relationships. You may not be able to achieve perfect star schema, but try to be close. So um, this is a general practice that one can follow uh, in respect to data modeling. So when you create relationships and you want to have, uh, you have different tables, multiple tables in, in your data uh, report. So what you can do is you can create multiple layouts and uh, you can organize your relationship according to that. So for example, if one table is connected to multiple tables, so you can create a layout for that and you can see what are the other related tables connected to that particular table. So with multiple layouts, you, you will have more faster navigation that this table is connected to what. Also, there is uh, this other thing that one must follow. So if you're having a fact table and the dimension table so try to uh, arrange it in a way that you have the fact table in the mid and then the dimension tables are surrounded by it okay and uh, always try to achieve star schema wherever possible next use font size 11 for chart title and 9 or 10 for data labels very straightforward uh, next filter out blank values in the visuals during reporting so what happens is uh, there are uh, instances when we have blank values in the data set itself or when we try to build some measures or something so there may be possibility that we come across some null values or blank values so try to filter those out so that you have clean data set to visualize Next, don't use more than three colors on a page. The uh, This is generally advised in a sense that the more minimalist pattern that you follow, uh, it will come out more catchy uh, for the person who is looking uh, into the report. Uh, like more colors will add clutter. So try to, uh, you know, avoid that. Next, use all clear button in slices. So uh, one is you can... Uh, uh, not in slices actually uh, what you can do is when you create buttons or bookmarks okay so um, and you have multiple pages multiple tabs in the report so what you can do it when you're trying to sync your slices so for example if you're trying to filter one value and you want that it can, it will filter all the rest of the tabs so what you can do is you can add this button which states that you clear all the filters that has been applied so that will save your time you don't have to you know go one by one to all the tabs to clear out or one by one slicers to clear out uh, all the filters that has been applied so try to use button for that next use data be a theme which uses spatial colors uh, this is uh, up to your choice add background to charts or add background to the title if the chart don't have background this is generally advice so that your data points are more in limelight and you can uh, you know pictureize or visualize uh, the data uh, labels more efficiently uh, next, group similar elements together, example, all cards as a cluster or all slicers as a cluster. So this will add more clarity, more organization of the visual. So for example, if you have slicers, so make sure that you arrange them all together. It's, it should not be like one slicer is at the left, one is at the right or somewhere in the bottom. So try to, you know, organize them in uh, similar patterns. Next, uh, use thick lines. Uh, for the line charts if there are one or two lines in the chart so generally when you uh, add thickness to your line so uh, that will add more visibility to the data point next use icons as much as possible so uh, i think this is very important to me uh, what i do generally is i try to make my report more pictorial uh, the more pictorial you represent your report uh, it is more catchy and uh, uh, this also uh, helps in user-friendly navigation and interaction in the report next group shapes wherever possible so uh, this is generally advised because what happens is when you try to align your visuals so on a tip of a mouse click you you know the alignment is disturbed so in order to keep the concreteness you better choose to group them next filter unused rows in the query editor before loading data to data model larger the data slower will be the report uh, and you 
just have to make sure that you do it after discussing with your project manager or whosoever you are reporting to so um what happens is uh, as i mentioned in my earlier video as well there are times when you know you the developer feels that this row or this particular column is very unwanted and you know you can just filter that out but uh, later going forward with project with time there may be chances that uh, the rows which are, which are filtered out in the beginning may have some value going forward so uh, it is always advised that while making this clearance uh, filters you always seek advice uh, to your pm or to your client next uh, study closely all the data types of uh, all the columns in the query editor why because this is very essential uh, when it comes to writing dax so uh, you will not be wasting your time that uh, you're trying to Uh, bring two different data types together and trying to bring some connection to it so uh, uh, it, this will simply save your time and uh, the better you study the data type it will be more easy to you know think logically in that manner next uh, make sure you are aware of the data type and the format of the raw data while writing dax example variance calculation to be uh, formatted to percent concatenating should be of similar data type i think this is similar to the point that i've explained just above um uh, when you are trying to write the dax so you must be aware that what format it should have so that you present your data points correctly when it comes to visualization next uh, in query editor add an additional step of remove other columns so that report is not affected with the new column entering during the data lo loading um yeah i think this is very essential in the in terms of data modeling as well why because let's say uh, you have five columns okay and you just want three of them so what you can do is you will select only the those three respective columns and you can choose to remove other column so next time when the data is you know refreshed or something and some new uh, uh, for false column or garbage column comes into uh, this uh, uh, after refresh so you can avoid uh, avoid bringing them into your data model so this will save your time and this will also help you to save the data model size next always convert date time to date column or create a new column instead while creating relationships between date time and date so um, it is generally advised that you don't create relationship between date time column and the date column uh, because this will definitely bring ambiguity at certain points of uh, time so try to break the columns into two split the columns at the, okay this is the date time column and i'm going to extract only the date part of that so and then you try to uh, build relationships in your tables okay next add zero in place of blanks wherever necessary